Hello, and welcome to Get Wrecked. I am your host, Louis Falgu. And I am your other host, Stephen Falgu. Oh. For those who are just joining us, if this is your first episode or if this is your 22nd episode, Get Wrecked is a podcast that Louis and I host. Every week, we recommend something to each other. And then in the week following, we discuss our thoughts and opinions on said thing and the cycle continues forever we are stuck in this hell prison <laughs> it's it's a hell prison it's not just a hell it's prison in it's, hell it's yeah it's prison in hell which actually what most people don't know it's actually kind of nice yeah it's like the nicest part of hell you would think oh man yeah because it's like it's already hell so it's like oh actually this prison it's not that bad yeah, they have air conditioning and everything. You don't really yeah, get that anywhere else in hell. Yeah, well, the air conditioning is just is just fire. Oh, yeah. It, it just blows out <laughs> fire. But I mean, like, you know, versus the other stuff, like we're not, you know, we're not having to roll a boulder up the hill every week. Mm -hmm. Although it sometimes feels like that. We have to do it every two weeks. Every two weeks. Yeah, every bi week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every fortnight, yeah, as exactly. the kids say um, these days. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a blast of fire because it's hell. So this week, Lewis, we have a unintentional uh, themed week. We are kind of yeah getting back onto the old YouTube. Thanks, Google. Yeah, exactly. We're uh, you see, we have a. I guess really, in a way, every episode is a YouTube theme because we are on YouTube. Uh, believe it or not. Right. And um, if it weren't for Alphabet, the company, we wouldn't exist. Uh, that is uh, accurate, but um... so thanks for the sponsorship, Google. <laughs> and now we're uh, we're giving back. Um, in your most, yeah, it sucks that you had to send us to hell to be able to do it, Google. But I mean, you know. Wait a minute, hang on. I never got this memo. Google sent me to hell. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, it, they they gave it to me. It was an error. They were like, "Oh, pass it along too," but I forgot. I figured at this point, it's like, does it really matter? I mean. I guess not. Like the results, the same, you know. But um, yeah, but it would have been nice anyway. Um, yeah. Well, our side job. So if anyone's curious, down here in hell, in the uh, week off that we have, we actually just flag videos. <laughs> so that's all we. That's what we do. We're so YouTube sorry, heroes. Everyone. Remember that? We're, we're, yeah. So sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, I think we should go to what you recommended to me, Stephen. If you would like to explain this to the audience here. Yeah, so we will start with a YouTube series uh, called Monster Factory. It was a playlist, a series of videos on the website Polygon.com that made its way onto YouTube. Polygon.com is a video journalism outlet online. Uh, it stars two brothers, Justin and Griffin McElroy, who viewers of Get Wrecked might remember from the My Brother, My Brother and Me podcast. Uh, they are two of the brothers in said podcast. But they started up this video series, and the general gist is they go into a game with a character creator, they make a beautiful monster, and then they play a little bit of the game with their beautiful monster creation that they have developed. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said was, so am I incorrect again in putting the present at the end of this? Because I did see it's been quite some time since the last episode, but... Yes, yeah, so uh, Griffin and Justin both actually recently quit at Polygon to pursue their podcasting career because their uh, family has a ridiculous number of podcasts and they do tours and such. Right. So they didn't say that they necessarily ended the series. They might go back and do uh, a sh one here and there, but they are no longer hired by Polygon, so I very highly doubt it. Okay, well then... Um... Uh, the present may prove to be accurate, as it did for um, Gourmet Makes, which uh, I said I was wrong in saying that it was continuing through the present, but then it actually did. So, um, yeah. So I guess which... uh, maybe we'll bring Monster Factory back. Maybe we'll. Yeah, be everyone the comes to get anything <laughs> that you. Anyone? Okay, out out there in the internet, if you want anything to come back, just tell it to us, recommend it to us, and then it'll inevitably happen. Uh huh. Oh yeah, for sure. And uh, so get ready when um, um, 
get ready for that, I guess. <laughs> Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec is coming back. Oh, shit. Uh, we, it's not really, but we'll make it happen. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. Trapped in the closet. I hope that comes back. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um... So uh, I'll, I'll I'll begin. So uh, Monster Factory, I think um, you know if you'll remember, if you guys will remember uh, during the My Brother, My Brother and Me episode, I actually surprised Stephen and the entire world, believe it or not, when I said that I really didn't like uh, that podcast particularly. I I didn't find. Uh, the McElroy brothers in that podcast to be that funny really. And I just kind of didn't, I, I don't know. I just did not enjoy it particularly. Uh, <laughs> but I, what's funny is, and before I say this, there's some video that I'd seen that I had, that I saw before I watched my brother, my brother and me that I had no idea was the McElroy brothers. It wasn't this, it was uh, this, a snippet from, I guess, one of their podcasts where they talked about watching Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Ah, uh, uh, yes, up they with have Dark a... Side of the Moon. <laughs> yes, so they have, the Macaro Brothers have a, a podcast that they do every Thanksgiving for the rest of forever where they watch Paul Blart My Cop 2 and talk about it. Yeah, that was hilarious, and I didn't know it was them, and I saw that before My Brother, My Brother, and Me, so that's kind of interesting. So I guess I can enjoy these guys and this series further cemented that um because uh this is just a riot i love the fact that this is a thing this is such a brilliant idea for a series and it's uh something i certainly would have never thought of um i think you know specifically making a gaming series all about character creators and just finding specifically character creators that allow you for really widespread customization. So you can make the weirdest shit in the world. Um, uh, the, 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 the best ones, um, or some of the best ones anyway, are when you get the random face feature. So if you just keep clicking the Uh, random face, it continues to morph it into just uglier and uglier things. (laughs) Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, so, Steven, I watched the episodes that you specifically recommended to me, and I, I checked out a couple other ones. Uh, not fully. The only ones I watched all the way through were the ones that you recommended. The other ones I kind of just watched the first half. Because if there is one thing I, I will say is that the format of the show, you know, they, they spend about half the episode creating the monster, so creating their character. And then they spend the next half of the episode playing through the game a little bit with that character. And I didn't like that because I feel like in nearly everyone that I watched, it just turned into a let's play and they barely like the fact that their character looked kind of ugly, didn't have to do with anything because you already saw them and it was already funny the first time. Now they're just playing the game and talking about it um, and making jokes about the game. So I didn't like that. Although in games like the WWE games, that's when it's a lot better because then you get to see their creature fighting other fighters. And that's that's when I can totally see why you would do this. But like in a game like Dark Souls or something, it, it I don't I just didn't care for that. They do get into some pretty fun hijinks. So I think the best thing about these two in this series is one, obviously the character creator portion is hilarious. Uh, But then just like how naturally they can find humor in the play segments that they do. And it's not all the time attached to the character, really. Like they could have just played a regular character, like you said, and kind of make it a let's play. But a lot of times it is attached to the character. And I think that's just it's those are really great episodes. So I have so I think so you mentioned there's like probably two recurring themes that happen within this series so one of them is the random face feature so that's any of the from software games have that but the other recurring theme and i don't remember if i asked you to watch any of these or not are any of the game any of the um the bethesda games especially early on where basically they uncover this glitch that uh you can do these console commands in bethesda games and they shrunk people down with the console command and then they died, and they became like this noodly monster on the ground. <laughs> no, I didn't. And see I don't it. know if you saw any of those. I didn't know. So some of my favorite episodes here. So so just to talk about the the format, um, 
So yeah, I think I think the format is brilliant because it is also I do like how they kind of devolve into a let's play in a sense because first, as I mentioned, they have a really great way of just making a lot of that stuff funny, but also because this is a really smart way to be, get someone invested and um, have a kind of different style of video format to showcase a lot of these games, right? I mean, there's like and a lot of the times they don't even really play the game. <laughs> Honestly, they just kind of see how they can break it in funny ways. Uh, that happens a lot. Um, they also have really hilarious interactions with real people in any of the uh, games that are like MMOs. So I don't know if you watched the episode of with Ark. No. Where they make the the lady from Murder She Wrote, and they try to go on a detective dino hunt, and they find this guy who has a dinosaur, and they're messaging him in chat about how they he how they thought their his dinosaur pooped in their steak, <laughs> and the guy starts to give them the steaks. No, I I didn't that's, see that. That stuff is always really funny. Um, but what I'll what I'll say is so some of my favorite episodes, and again, I don't remember which ones I recommended to you, honestly, but I, I hope that I recommended to you the one that's in uh not Blade and Soul, uh Black Desert Online. Did I recommend that yes. one to you? The bar where they make bar yes, yes, I saw that. <laughs> that that, that, just, that, that I just, was I was that was gut busting. That was amazing. I, yeah, uh, just haven't laughed that hard in quite some time watching them. When they yeah. when he discovered the asymmetrical feature, that was the most incredible incredible. Yeah. Absolutely and then their incredible. whole their whole rant about Matt Gr Groening, like <laughs> yes. talking about how he's given up and that he's handed Bart over to them it, now. Um but that was another one where I didn't once they switched to the let's play, I just stopped caring. I, I they didn't even I don't know. I think that's that's my my main issue here, and I maybe it does just come down to again. I I don't really find these guys that funny. I I, I still kind of don't because when it did transition into them doing the let's plays, where it was kind of more about them, uh, just making jokes about the game. I didn't really, I I don't know. It just didn't really work for me. I I I was I found the character creation stuff to be just a, a lot funnier. So. You know, I guess that shouldn't be surprising, given how I felt about my brother, my brother and me, right? So, I I don't feel mm. like I need to say much about that. I just it just didn't. I don't know. I I didn't find them that funny. But but yes. Um, I not even. I I I think the the good thing is that because they do spend like nine ten minutes making the monster. If that's all you want to watch, it's pretty easy to just watch that part. I mean, that's what I was doing going through some other episodes and just watching the beginning. Like where they made a toucan man, I think it was. I don't remember. Yeah, toucan, yeah. toucan Dan, toucan the toucan Dan. man. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they had a lot of different formats too. They they did this. Uh, so the the logo that you presented up there kind of started when they did this like super short series of um, Facebook videos where they were like really quick. It was basically just the creation portion, and they tried to make beautiful art. So they created a, a character and then tried to like in a portrait mode, basically in Skyrim, create these like works of art. And that was really funny, too. And then they have kind of like short series that pop up. So there was an episode in Second Life where they create the boy mayor of Second Life. And then they have a three part series later where they go back and try to get the boy mayor of Second Life reelected. <laughs> So there's a lot of different stuff in this too. It's not just all that same format necessarily of create, create character, play game. Um, they did a couple different things. Yeah. So well, of, the, of the episodes you watch, is there any particular one that stood out that you want to um, talk about? Uh, well, <laughs> you already talked about the Bart Simpson one, so that's which is really good. That yeah. one I think is probably hands down my favorite. I, I, <laughs> yes, I, I adored it. Um, yeah. Um. What. What. What other episodes did I. Did I, I. I. don't know. I watched. Um. I'm trying to like remember all the 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 ones I saw them make. Oh right, when they made the pebble. Holy shit. Oh yes, yeah, the pebble. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. That might have been the best episode overall because I was still laughing into the gameplay section too. Yeah. Which is why I said that for some games I do actually think it's it makes sense to keep playing. 
um, for the sake of the series anyway, because in like WWE, watching a dude with like noodle arms and a pebble chest <laughs> attack it is brilliant. Um, and, and also, when they, uh... they gave him like the diva um, entrance, but they turned off his entrance music and all other spectacles, so he just like comes out like rubbing his chest to no sound. <laughs> while the, the, the announcer says, Christopher, 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 Christopher. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Uh, did you watch the other WWE episode? Because that one was really good too. Um, I didn't see any other WWE episodes. So yeah. So there was another WWE episode as well where um, the game put in a function where you could like upload a picture uh-huh. and put and put a fi- picture on someone's face and make something off of that. Uh-huh. So Griffin Griffin makes Justin in the game. But obviously, it's like a nightmare creature that's supposed to be Justin. And that one was really good, too. <laughs> yeah, I might, I might check it out because I, I really enjoyed that WWE. And yeah, that might have been the best. And um, the Bart Simpson had the funniest character creation, but uh, probably the best one overall that I watched is probably the, the Pebble episode. Um, yeah, that one's that one's good. I, I also like a lot, although it's I didn't recommend it to you, I don't think. But there was a Mass Effect 2 episode. And basically what they do is Mass Effect 2's character creator really isn't that crazy. So they got a, um, they downloaded a mod that let you literally tweak like every vertice on the character. And so they make this like, this nightmare creature where like one single vertex is like extended off across the screen. And (laughs) and then every time they just start it up a little bit and they have him get to the point where he's talking to another character like face to face. And oftentimes his face is literally devouring the NPC. (laughs) And so stuff like that is yeah, really that, good that that um that is something i should watch yeah i mean i actually yeah. would um go back and watch more of these because uh, i did they were cracking me up i i don't um yeah i don't know i i think i pretty much covered everything i don't know if there's something you want to bring up specific about it that we haven't already yeah i guess i would just say this was definitely one of my favorite youtube series rest in peace monster factory if it is in um, peace, if it is if it is in peace yeah hopefully hopefully they come back and they're able to do this again like at least once or twice because this there's just so many great um uh, great videos that came out of this series and uh I, I like i said i really think that this is a very interesting way to showcase a game because now you know let's plays and and even like video playthroughs have become so stale and stagnant but this is a, a really funny interesting fresh way to showcase a lot of these games um i would say similarly to this uh, video game donkey i think does a very does something that i think is in the same line where it's like it's it the way that these guys the way that video game donkey can break a game is just astounding and hilarious and it's like it almost feels like and i don't know if this is the case or not that this is just their first recording run through of a lot of these things and to see them make something so consistently hilarious on like a first recording like a first attempt Mm -hmm. is is really great and and like i mentioned the other thing i like about this series is that there are a lot of a lot of different ways that they approach the format um Like some videos are like, okay, we're going to go in and we're going to make Cyber Garfield or Bart Simpson. And some videos are just like, we're just going to make the ugliest thing. But what's what but what's consistent about this, and I think they specifically call it out in the very first episode, which I think I had you watch. Uh They always love their monsters. They're never making fun of these things. They're just making this hilarious creature that they then then they then like play in the sandbox with. And it's it's just a great way to showcase uh, these these video games like I talked about, yeah. And given that it's on Polygon, it makes sense that you know it it, it does actually um, get you interested in the games that they're kind of uh, you know publicizing. So yeah. it makes sense for Polygon to have uh, had this series on it as well. I um yeah Griffin actually while he was there and he was the video producer he he created a ton of just hilarious content. Um, a lot of it here with Justin, pretty much any Griffin Justin video is just is just really great if it's Monster Factory or any of the other ones they did. But also with Nick Robinson. Nick Robinson had some sexual harassment stuff that went down and he got 
fired, but while they were together, they made some really hilarious videos as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and um... this is and this is and I, the last thing I'll just say quickly. Sorry, I keep interrupting you, but the last thing I'll just say quickly is that this was kind of what introduced me to the McElroys initially. So I got into this first. And then from here, I started listening to My Brother, My Brother, and Me, Adventure Zone, many of their other podcasts. They, they've guessed it on Drawfee. So we, we talked about Drawfee. They have an episode on Drawfee where they, they help the Drawfee guys make a board game. And that one is really, really funny, too. Um, yeah, I just find them consistently hilarious. So we've discovered a consistent thread throughout. Steven's I know. We race. have this. Yeah. Our yeah. Uh, greater Get Wrecked universe is finally coming together. Get on that Get Wrecked wiki heads. Yeah. The um, Great Wrecked podcast cinematic universe. Um, so I... Uh, I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. So I, like I said, I think that this is, this is a lot of fun. I think that, you know, um, just the concept here is really funny and had it, or if it does continue, I, I would hope so. I feel like there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of uh, opportunities for this kind of thing to keep going. There's a lot of ways to keep this interesting, to keep this fresh. And, um, yeah, I just think that this is, uh, you know, very, very entertaining. I certainly liked it more than my brother, my brother and me. However, I don't really watch any gaming videos at this point anymore. I just kind of don't care for them because I don't care for gaming in general, really. So I don't know that this it was going to be too easy for this to, like, become a favorite series of mine. And it, and it didn't because uh, I just I just don't care for that kind of stuff. And given that a lot of this is essentially a Let's Play series, I just didn't really care for that too much so if i had to give a score i guess i would say like a seven which is actually pretty fair given the amount i actually did enjoy versus the amount that i didn't because a lot of the time i enjoyed like half or even less than half of the episode and got bored for the rest of it but the thing is the sections that i did enjoy i enjoy so much that i feel like it makes up for it for sure and um if, uh, if they kept making episodes and or even if they don't, I, I could see myself watching more of this. So I would recommend it. And um, yeah. And for me, and I can't believe this is happening two weeks in a row, but for me, this is an easy 10 out of 10 series. I consistently go back and watch these episodes and they are consistently funny to me to where I easily recommend these. I think I've given a, enough of my thoughts as we've been talking about this. Um as to why that's the case, but I, I think that everyone should check out at least, if nothing else, please check out the episode where they make Bart Simpson because yes. it's so good. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, definitely recommend that. So so can people on the Get Wrecked Wiki please count the amount of things Steven's given a 10? Because I know it's been more than two. I think it may have been more than three at this point. Can we please count? Right? There were th there was this one. There was the thing we did last... Um, what, what was it last? The Shining? And then you also... If, if I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure you had given Drawfee a 10. I And I know you gave have. Die Hard a 10, and I know you gave Westworld a 10. You guys bet I want you guys yeah. to start counting. Start counting those tens, okay? I want I want to see Steven's perfect yeah. scores wiki page tomorrow, all right? Okay. Yeah, I'm going for at least a 60% average. 60% of your recommendations are tens. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a great idea. Um Okay. The real question is, how many tens have I given that of a thing that you've recommended? Now um, we need the wiki heads to do some research. That's right. I don't think any. Um, which means that Steven is not a patrician. Hey, we should uh, we should move on. So I would retroactively give uh, In the Aeroplane Over the Sea a 10. Oh, Everyone can write that down. I would retroactively. I'm still listening to that. That's fantastic. I'm so happy because... It is a 10 and deserves it. Okay. Um, so I am going to move on to what I recommended to Steven here. I recommended the first six episodes of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, another YouTube series, although really not similar in any way whatsoever. Like, I can't think of one similarity besides them being on YouTube. So <laughs> take that for what you will. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is a... It started off as a short film, but grew into six episodes of, I suppose, a series. I don't know if you'd call them six short films individually or if they're just episodes of a series. I really don't know. Um, so you could call it a web show, short films, who knows, um, created by 
what was at one point the This Is It art collective. I don't think that's their name anymore. I know they also did like a music video for Tame Impala or something. So they kind of, they did some stuff before this, but I mean, this is what they're known for now. And, um, Tim and Paul. No, Tame Impala. Tim, oh, okay. I was like, Tim and Paul. I don't know what that, <laughs> yeah, Tame Impala. Uh, so anyway, uh, I will let, uh, Steven go from here basically and try to explain what, uh, he watched. So the fuck, the oh, fuck though. Wow. <laughs> What the fuck is this? <laughs> it's a I did, YouTube so, series okay. called I, Don't yeah, Hug yeah. Me, I'm Scared. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Could you explain that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, so no, this is uh, a YouTube series. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, so, I, so before going into this, I actually had seen the first one, I want to say pretty much right when it came out, and then I just fell off the series. So it was interesting to go back to it and then and then watch through now to to get caught up i would call this a series i would call this a series especially as it got to later on in the episodes because i want to say like episode four and on are very closely connected right so in, in, all of the episodes are starring the same characters but like at episode four there are events that you had to have seen before you go to like five and six uh -huh. so in that way i call this a series so just to talk about this i think that the format is hilarious right so the format of these videos is that it's like basically a children's cartoon show they're puppet people they're almost like muppets in a way um two two that are puppets one that I'm, is a guy in a in a suit much like the muppets or, or sesame street um and they have and they listen to fun songs although then it devolves into insanity um <laughs> very quickly so like talking about the first episode for instance i feel like the first episode is the most tame of these mm. um where so they they are all sitting around and they sing a song about being how to be creative and then by the end of it it devolves into this nightmare fuel where they're picking up human hearts and dancing around to satan um I think that 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 one to me is still the funniest of all of these. Um, I, I like the part where they go, uh, where he teaches them how to be creative by taking sticks and arranging them into your favorite color. And the one guy writes down green and the thing goes, that's not a creative color. Yeah. Which is funny. And there's some other things too that are, that are kind of funny to me in this series. Like when they're, when for whatever reason they're talking about fish like, oh, I fish in my plate and fish in the bathtub. And the guy's like, it's 930. There's fish over everywhere. That kind of shrugs. Mm -hmm. That's funny to me. Um, so I I think, I think, if I were to talk about what I think these things are. So each of them, I believe, is definitely saying, is definitely trying to portray some sort of message about creativity, about how much time we look at screens and think about what others tell us we need to think about uh but i don't want to look into it that deeply because i don't care uh, i just like thinking of these videos as these hilarious uh expectations of versions like as they're talking and teaching about love and then they actually are all praying to a giant stone god that they have to feed gravel to yeah it's pretty uh, bizarre it's very bizarre i i uh, I, I, I don't know if this series is still continuing i think you and i talked about it off mic um but it if it if not i mean it kind of did wrap itself up on episode six where i could see that being a natural conclusion so right. i don't know if we want to put up any spoilers lewis yeah so I, I i i do have a spoiler tag i mean we kind of already spoiled the experience and i don't know what there is to spoil but yeah um, i mean i don't know how you can talk about this without spoiling the experience i mean i really. i yeah i suppose that's true i mean do, do, do we want to put up the tag or not because if we do what are we even gonna i don't even know what that would entail us talking about at this point well i kind of wanted to talk about how episode six ends okay uh, okay we want to go there right now yeah i'm moving fast and quick okay. baby all right fair enough um no stops go for it then spoiler tag okay okay so so the whole series starts on June 19th and they're all sitting around and they have the creative thing. Then they talk about time and episode. They talk about love. A computer turns them into weird computer creatures and the red guy blows up uh, the yellow. They talk about food and the yellow guy eats the bird. And that's really crazy. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then 
episode six, they try to teach him about a dream, and the yellow guy is all by himself now and doesn't want to hear any more. Because they all turn into nightmare, and all his friends are dead. And then, well, the red, the red guy, guy just went away. He didn't. He didn't die. No, he blew up. I mean, his head blew up, but it didn't actually. And like, then he was on a plate. And he's... then he was being eaten on a plate. No, you don't remember is, this? This is this is no. The green guy was eaten. But you're, that's you're mistaken. No, no, no. The red guy was in a plate. He went to a phone. He was he was he calling was a spaghetti. Them. He was calling them from the phone. Remember the red guy was. No, no. The red guy. Booth. The red guy was spaghetti on the plate, and his eyes came out. Do you remember that? Yes, I know what you're talking about. Well, 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 anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, so in the sixth episode. Uh, <laughs> they're talking about dreams and the red guy wakes up from a dream in this like real world where there are all these red guys in business suits and it's this drab lifeless world and the red guy tries to bring he he basically strips naked at a karaoke or at a piano bar to sing the creative song kind of theoretically insinuating that this is all in his head and he might be going crazy but then it all kind of falls apart, and he finds this server room where he can affect the yellow guy's world, which is the puppet world. Um, there's this there's this d yellow dad character that is, like, hidden in a lot of the episodes, mm -hmm. and then is, like, this god of their world or something. Yeah, the red guy unplugs like the, whole, the whole simulation, and then it starts all over again, only now it's June 20th, and they're all different colors, but it's all the same character. Yeah. Um, I you know it's funny that we put up the spoiler tag because while that is the ending, there I, I mean, <laughs> still to this day I would be lying if I were to tell you that I pieced it together because it's very abstract, incredibly abstract. Like I don't. Again, we were just arguing whether the red guy was dead or not because it, nothing about that is clear. Like. I didn't, I don't think, oh, I don't even know. I, I don't think he's, I mean, I don't think, like, it's all in his head or something. I mean, like, we saw, you know, the, when the phone's ringing throughout episode five, you know, and then in the credits, I think the credits of episode five, he's walking out of a phone booth. The red guy's walking out of a phone booth. So it's like he learned something and he was calling them to tell them what had happened because the red guy leaves mid-episode in episode five or something like that. But it's like... I don't <laughs> even though I guess there is a story here it's it's very it's just kind of a lot of loose ends you have to figure out and I I'm I don't think that it's needlessly abstract I think it's really entertaining that it's hard to piece together and that people can you know talk about it and try to figure it out but um there's there seem to be a lot of different themes going on here and um of course you can watch some people sit down for like 30 minutes and try to explain all the symbolism and whatever and there's there are some um i think there are a lot of connections to british television and stuff people have pointed out that seem like that's probably the message um something to do with british children's programming and whatever um but uh i don't know i, I guess also because i'm american or because we're american that's gonna go over our heads anyway um uh, so there's a lot of yeah. They only show American TV down here in Hell Prison, <laughs> unfortunately. So. Well, well, no, 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 no. Um, only in our Hell Prison because our Hell Prison is actually um beneath the area that uh, we consider the United States. Yeah, yeah. It's the she it's the uh, Joe Arpaio tent city. Actually, is where <laughs> we are. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, I, I think I, you can take the spoilers tag yeah, we'll, down we'll now. We'll take the spoiler tags down and and and, and talk more more broadly. Um. So, I want to first say something that I really like about this series that I think makes it... Oh, wait, it... quickly. Quickly, someone in the chat is asking if it ended. Um, well, episode six went through 2016. I'm not sure if there's going to be another one, no, so I wouldn't are. say well, yes. They teased more episodes in a new video. Uh, I, I, as it says, you can see episodes one through six, 2011 to 2016. So, it did end there. It was supposed to, but I guess... They tease more episodes, so I guess more are coming, which is awesome. Uh, what I wanted to say about this is... This is, to me, like, the pinnacle of what a YouTube series can be. Because... And I guess this has kind of changed now that they're doing more, but that's fine. Uh, something like a series... Most YouTube series kind of operate in that there's no... 
idea for what the series is going to be, you know, from beginning to end. It's just, here's an idea of, uh, here's an idea for videos we're going to do, and we're just going to do them until we decide to stop, right? Like, we just talked about Monster Factory. That's what kind of what I'm talking about, you know? Like, it's not like they thought, oh, we're going to end Monster Factory in episode 12, and there's going to be a story, and, like, that's not, you know. Um, and for you, for the YouTube format, that makes perfect sense, but um, as a series, something like this is just inevitably going to be much better as a series because it functions as one and you have a beginning and a middle and an end even though it wasn't initially planned to do that it all made itself came come together to the point where you wouldn't even have to really know um i think that the production values in this series are just off the charts amazing right like this thing looks great the set design yeah, we and talked, everything. We haven't, we haven't talked about that, but yeah, I mean, like even from the very first episode and the film or the, the camera quality, you can tell gets better, but just the set design and the puppeteering and like how they sometimes are puppets and sometimes they're like, they create basically 3D art out of these guys. And yeah. sometimes it's real. Sometimes it's puppets. It's yeah, it's awesome. It looks, it just looks, I mean, it just looks great. I mean, this, it's, and, you know, the amount of time that must go into making each one of these videos, I just can't even imagine, you know? And it, it makes sense that it took, like, months and months and months for these to come out, because they clearly take that amount of time to, to be made. Um, and also, you know, they have to make the song and everything, and the production values on those are always pretty high. And, it, and it, honestly, it's, some of those songs are very convincingly like children's songs, you know? Until you get to, like, episodes five and six, where the songs have just completely degraded. <laughs> like, it's no longer even, like, this is a fun song throughout the episode, and oh shit, it just got fucked up at the end. No, it's like the whole time, shit just keeps not... Yeah. It's, it just keeps degrading yeah. and digressing, but I... Yeah, like the one where it's a universe, and he goes, I am a universe, and there's planets in the moon and you can take a rocket to the moon yeah <laughs> yeah but I, that was i think that was clearly intentional right like the series is just oh yeah for sure falling apart and um the production design reflects that which is great i uh but uh, uh what um yeah so that's something i wanted to mention but i i, I, I was talking about symbolism and stuff and i think that this very clearly has uh, a consistent theme that's clearly about children's programming to some extent or another, right? Now, to what extent or what it's trying to say about that, I kind of have my own theory, but not really. Um, I don't... I'm not really interested in discussing theories about it, to be honest, because everybody does that already, you know? Uh, I just want to appreciate how painstaking the um, the design is in this and the the production design and all that kind of stuff and just how and the forethought like you mentioned yeah exactly just how great of a how great of a work of art or, or of short films and stuff that 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 at least this was early on as it turned into a series that element went away but even in that aspect it was a, just a great series that even if it didn't end conclusively it was still satisfying i would have been perfectly fine if episode six was the last one you know Yeah, and I, I definitely agree. And you can kind of tell that, too, from the series. So this is kind of where I was going as a portion of what I was saying about how 4 through 6 become very connected. Feels like especially episode 1, kind of episode 2, and then a little bit episode 3. Feels like at those times, they really didn't... They had the forethought, clearly, of making this into a thing. But you could tell they were much more trying to be this self-contained art project than anything else. And then as it kind of as it kind of rolled, as you mentioned, into more of a series, then they're creating these connections and the art as the art project aspect still exists. I mean, having a giant talking piece of beef that's a human talking about everything turning your teeth gray is just complete nonsense. <laughs> it's insanity. <clears throat> yeah. Um, um I but yeah, for sure. I, I, I know because another... there's so many different things too, right? It's like clay, it's felt, it's puppets, it's actors, it's real animals at certain points. It, it's <laughs> just insane. It's whole sets when they're when they go into the real world. I mean, it's it's insanity. Yeah, 
that must the work that must have gone into each of these episodes and they and they started off pretty short they started off about like three-ish minutes and then they just kept getting longer i think the last one was eight minutes it's just the amount of time that must have gone into each of those yeah for sure um and obviously something we haven't really talked about too much that is I don't know. It, it's another thing that I don't think is the most interesting thing to talk about exclusively with this because it's what everybody says. But yes, the series is disturbing. <laughs> Obviously. Um, that was, I think, kind of early. If you watch these guys' first like short film, I think that's always been their vibe. This kind of weird, like, um, so, like just... There's something inherently... I think disturbing to us, to people who have grown up with watching things like this, you know, there's something inherently disturbing about seeing fucked up things happen in an incredible, in, in an incredibly innocent format like this, you know, having puppets being sung to by other puppets. And the next thing you know, they're eating cakes with hearts in them and jumping around and <laughs> fucking smearing the word death with, blood you know <laughs> so i um I, I i appreciate that aspect too i think that uh interestingly episode three i mean that's kind of always the thing right like episode five there's like guts and gore and episode one there's some gore and you know episode two so that's kind of the you, ex you you come to expect it at a certain point but episode three does something interesting because it doesn't have like a freak out bloody gory ending like some of the other ones do, right? It's th what's disturbing about it comes from some littler things, like the story of a boy who was lonely, and the whole thing's about how you'll find love, right? But at the end of the story, he just goes underground and lays down and cries, and then the story ends. So it's mm. littler things like that in that episode that or I thought was really good. Eat raw chicken. Or a thing hatches from an egg, and it looks like a fetus, and they kill it. <laughs> yeah, but that stuff was... I don't know. I, that stuff was, like, very, you know, very minimal compared to everything else. I think that stuff was almost in there just because they had to do that kind of thing. But I liked that the episode did more... It had a more psychological horror to it than some of the other ones did. Uh, episode 4 as well. Um, but anyway... Um, that, that, again, that's all I really wanted to say about that. I think, uh, something I did want to talk about though was, um, um, each episode has a new, like, teacher character, right? So, depending on what they're learning about, they, like, in episode one, it's this little notebook that's teaching about creativity. In episode two, it's a clock. In episode three, it's this little, like, uh, butterfly. In episode four, it's a computer, in five, it's like a giant talking steak and something else, right? I'm just forgetting what the other one was, like a... A can of spinach. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then in episode six, it's a lamp. <laughs> uh, I mean, kind of, because episode six is, is kind of different. Yeah. But I do like how they kind of play with that, that theme, because in episode four, the one with the computer... They're like all sitting around and they at, they have a question in front of them that's like, what's the biggest thing in the world? And they're like, oh, I wish there was a way we could learn this. And they all look to the globe <laughs> and the globe doesn't do anything. And then the duck goes, yeah, I really wish there was a way to learn this. They look to the globe again. And then it finally turns around with a face, but then the computer interrupts them and yeah. it's the teacher. <laughs> yeah. Which I thought that was actually a pretty funny bit. But I, I do... Um... I, I, I like the way that all these teachers, like, and this is another thing where I think there's a lot to speculate on meaning wise, but um, every teacher is very, very like hard line on what they want these the kids or the puppets, I guess, to learn. Because if the puppets question anything that they're telling them, they get like pissed off and interrupt them as soon as possible. This happens in like almost every episode I can think of, um, you know, like when the clock um, <laughs> starts, uh, its alarm goes off and it starts screaming when the duck starts um, trying to think about what if time might actually just be a human construct. And um, what else? Yeah, they yeah they're, they're like they're like this doesn't make any sense when the uh, when the steak's explaining how food works like with the house analogy, stuff like that. So it's like the the yeah. the, the the teachers are trying to almost indoctrinate the puppets, you know, 
and uh, I guess get them to kill each other. Because <laughs> that happens. So. Okay, so I think that's all I have for, for this one. Mm -hmm. If we want to maybe, if we maybe want to wrap it up. Yeah, I have, I have nothing else to add. Okay, so for me, I, I really like this series. And like I said, when I came into this, I had only seen the first episode and it kind of, kind of dropped off. And it was fun to go back to that first episode and then progress through this whole series. I think this is one of easily um, my my favorite new series on YouTube that I found. Like, I'd probably go back to this again after being away from it for a little while. Just because, and, and really is, like I said, I don't really care about the deeper meaning of all this stuff. I, I don't. I'll probably watch one or two, maybe try to analysis videos and maybe try to piece it together. But I more care about what we talked about, like just the artistry and the craft that went into this. It, it's just it's crazy. It really is. It's it's wild because I can't imagine they had any sort of budget. So just that they could pull all this together is is nuts to me. I mean, there's a part where they have a live duck. How did they do that? Yeah. That probably cost a lot of money. I don't know. <laughs> So anyway, I'd give this a 9.99. Oh, damn. <laughs> and I would definitely recommend it. <laughs> I think that's probably going to be our first and only 9.99. Um, yeah, um, I echo the same thoughts. I, I wouldn't say that I don't care about the analysis angle. I just don't find it that interesting to discuss here. But I do think it's, it's worth, you know, um, thinking about. I, I can tell that there was... A deeper meaning to this um i also think that uh, the, uh since it's never going to be revealed it's kind of just whatever you want it to be really um but I, I i appreciate the symbolism and all of those kinds of things i i do um but on top of that yes uh amazing production design amazing um, I mean, I'm, uh, just amazing everything, right? The music is fucking great. And it's not great as in, yeah. like, I love the songs particularly. I just love the way they imitate um, these sort of children's TV show tunes. And it's yeah. it's great. Like, this thing could easily pass as a fake children's show, which is kind of when it was just the first episode. It was one of those shock videos, you know, because you'd show somebody it and they wouldn't catch on that it was going to be fucked up. Now, of course, that's obvious and everybody knows that. But at the time, that wasn't so clear. I, um, but yeah, this is exactly the kind of stuff I like. I love shit like this. I'm a sucker for these weird artsy YouTube videos where the creators have complete creative freedom to do whatever they want. This kind of thing would never be on TV. Um, like, you're only going to get this kind of stuff online. And, um, I, I, I just, I love this kind of stuff. The weird, artsy, disturbing stuff. It's the kind of stuff that if I had more creativity, I really wish I could do. And maybe I'll attempt one day. I don't know. But I love stuff like this. And this series just really scratches that itch. But it's really probably the best I've seen of that kind of stuff. Like, this is really great. And I will also give this a 9. Uh, and uh, I will say my favorite episode is the first one, actually. What about you, Stephen? Yeah, no, I actually think I agree. Yeah. I just think it's... And it was so revolutionary at the time. I mean, YouTube was still kind of getting its footing. 2011 is a little late in the game, but like this kind of like weird WTF, like su expectation subversion at the end kind of video was really sort of new at this point. And just the the way in which they did it was so wonderful that even going back to the... And as I mentioned, I like some of the jokes. I think some of the jokes in that first video land pretty well too. I think it's... Yeah. The way that they make fun of that yellow character at multiple times is, is funny to me. Yeah. Where he's like, I'm going to paint a clown. And they're like, not so fast. And they completely <laughs> ruin it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think we both recommend this, right? Yep. Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think we will go on to your rec, Stephen. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do something different here, Lewis. We're doing this live. Pick a number between one and three. Oh shit! Between well, one pick a three. number, <laughs> pick a number one, two, or three, not okay. the number between right. one. Two. I was about to be a smartass. Um, let's see. I'm running this through my head. The numbers are getting crunched. It's like a lottery. Ding, 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 ding. Three. You picked the number three. Yes. Well, oh, that was a mistake. 
All right. Well, I guess I'm giving you this then. No, just kidding. Uh, so, <laughs> Lewis, I am recommending to you the album Modern Vampires of the City by Vampire Weekend. Modern right. Vampires of the City is the third Vampire Weekend album, unsurprisingly, as you picked number three. Um, it released in 2000 and something. 13. 2013, I want to say. Yep, I want to say 2013. It was kind of their last album. Ezra Koning, the front man, left after this point and sort of disbanded the band. However, I've heard recently that they might be getting back together and there might be a new album next year. Um, but uh, this is kind of bringing their sound back. For, for their first album, they were very upstart kind of college and very New York sound. For their second album, they collaborated with a lot of people on the California coast. So they kind of had a little more California sound influence. This gets them back to that original sort of New York sound. Um, very introspective album. I won't, we, I'm sure we'll talk about it next week. So I won't talk about it too much here. Um, so yeah, that's my recommendation to you. Modern Vampires of the City. Sweet. And uh, Steven, I'm going to recommend to you a film. Uh, the film is called Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. This movie is the second film in the Indiana Jones... Well, I was going to say trilogy, but that's not true, is it? Not anymore. Um, what once was the Indiana Jones trilogy, and I don't think I need to say anything about it, right? Like, everybody knows what it is. <laughs> so, it came out in 19-something. Well, fuck. There you go. <laughs> um, okay. I'm gonna take a quick break. Well, I mean, we're done, so... <laughs> I think, um, um, here, well then you talk for a second. I'll be right back. I'll talk. And, uh, yeah. So, hello everybody. This is our post show thing. Um, hi everyone. It's just me. Isn't that exciting? Uh, I'll read some of your stupid chats. <laughs> I have been seeing these the whole time. Don't worry, people. I saw it all. Um, uh, what do I, what do I, okay. Got? I'm back. Yes. We don't, uh, we are always paying attention to the chat. We're just not paying attention to you. Well, I wasn't going to uh, say anything about these very stupid messages they've been leaving. Come on, guys. Give us better stuff. Machomp, you will never see your father or your children again. <laughs> he says, I love you, Lewis. Please let me see my children and their father. Oh, well. Um, We're down uh, here in a hell prison. We can't help you. Sorry. Um, I'm just going to skip a lot of these. Um, issues with Aggression 3 now. I don't think you're ever getting Issues with Aggression 3, people. Sorry to tell you this. <laughs> and I'm not going to respond to any more of this crap. That's all you get. Thanks, guys. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, at the end of this episode, I just want to make sure that we get that nice uh, cr uh, crunch down of the numbers. See how many tens Steven is given. Oh, Steven, shit, I just realized a problem in this formula. We didn't initially give scores, which means you didn't score Trout Mask Replica. What do you give Trout Mask Replica, Steven? A hundred. Okay, great. So Steven gave an, a hundred. Now we have an a hundred. <laughs> I, actually give it, I actually give it a ten over ten, so I give it a one. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm lost. Um, Instead of 10 oh, out of oh, 10. a 10 over. I see what you're saying. Like 10 divided by 10. Damn. Yeah. Um, That's right. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, Stephen, do you have anything to say on the on the closing here? Nope. Okay. Well, then uh, those were our thoughts. Those were our recommendations. Get wrecked.